Benvenuti a tutti. Welcome everybody to another edition of Italian America Long Island. My name is Dave Anthony Setto Ducati. Today our topic is studying in Italy. Italy has long been a center of knowledge and learning. In 1088 the University of Bologna was founded and it has been in continuous operation since then. And there are many, many other fine universities still in operation in Italy today. Thousands of Americans go to Italy to study, whether it be medicine, art restoration in history, cooking, or music. Today we have three guests who've had the experience of studying in Italy, and we're going to talk to them about those experiences. On my left, we have Jacqueline Melbourne Sutta Ducati, uh, my beautiful daughter-in-law. And uh, next to her, we have Kristen Vichelli, who is my wonderful teacher of Italian language. And next to Kristen, we have Louisa Grober, a friend of mine and fellow student of Italian. So the first thing I'd like to ask you, uh, ladies, is why did you choose to study in Italy at all? My mother's Italian-American, and she grew up speaking Italian at home, but I never learned any of it. And after she passed away, I needed to talk to my Italian relatives, and it seemed the best thing to do was study in Italy, if you're going to study Italian language. So it was actually a very practical reason for you to communicate with your relatives. Yeah. I had traveled there with my mother a few times, and she did all the speaking, my mother and grandmother, and I just sat there feeling stupid. But after they passed away, someone needed to continue the conversation with the relatives, and I guess I was the likely candidate. Okay. Now, Kristen, I know you have relatives in Italy. Is that, was that a similar reason that you studied in Italy? Uh, I've been speaking Italian throughout my life, and some of it I didn't even realize was Italian because my parents mixed English and Italian together, so I asked my friends for the Scuola Pasta, and they have no idea what I'm talking about when I'm asking for a Collinger. Um, but as an Italian teacher, I thought that it was important to go back to Italy and um, revisit the culture and really be 100% in it and to be a part of it. And bringing that to my students, I think, adds a whole new dimension to the classroom. I had come to it a little more randomly, I think. My college roommate had gone to do a program in Florence for the summer, for six weeks. And she came back and she couldn't say enough wonderful things about Italy. So you studied fine arts. Mm -hmm. I don't know why anybody would go to Italy to study. <laughs> <laughs> I studied a little bit of everything. Um, government, art, art, architecture, cinema, um, and culture in general. Well, I've uh, gone to a number of different schools because I try to go back every spring. So I went to, I've gone to two different schools in Florence, one in Rome, one in Montepulciano, and one in uh, Sorrento. And I've studied mostly language, but then also a little bit of Baroque architecture, wine appreciation in Montepulciano. I took the course in, that was <laughs> wonderful. Um, and Renaissance art in Florence. So, you know, it's been wonderful. What a wonderful experience. But now, did you go to universities or was it uh, private schools? These are all private language schools. Private language schools, which I've heard of, and I know that some of them are quite amazing. And how about you? Where did you attend? Um, the University of Florence, and then also uh, the University for Foreigners in Perugia. Which University is in for Perugia. Foreigners? Yes. Perugia. <laughs> That's the translation of it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Okay, in Perugia. I went to the school of uh, Lorenzo de' Medici in Florence. School of Lorenzo de' Medici. Mm -hmm. and that's, of course, an art school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's mostly fine arts, although they do offer language programs as well. Um, a few of my roommates had done specifically uh, language programs and then various other fine arts focus. Okay, and I know that while you were there, you actually studied art restoration. It was, it was amazing. It really was. Um, there, there is so much art in the region that uh, it's, it's almost commonplace for various classes to work on pieces that have come from a monastery that are from the 17th century that, you know, in any other situation would be, uh, would, you know, would be handled by the, the, the top experts in the field, but because there was so much of it, we really got the opportunity to work on 
pieces of art that were 400 years old. John, how long were you there? I was there for four months. For four months? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kristen, how about you? I was there kind of back and forth with different studies, um, so it ended up being, uh, I guess, over a year that I was there for study purposes. Over a year, okay, and you've made several trips. Yes. As Louisa has made several trips. So, in total, how much time do you think you, you spent uh, studying? Um, probably four months at this point, but I go at a, a month at a time. Right, you go to, so, and you've been doing this every year. So that, that's a wonderful way to do it. Now, I'd like to ask something that's uh, a little bit academic. I know that uh, Kristen is a licensed teacher. Um, were the teaching methods that you encountered in Italy and the, the way that the school was set up and run different than the schools here in the United States? Um, it was. I think it was set up more as how we used to learn, and probably all of us here learned when we were in school, um, in grade school. It's very much uh, lecture style and the teacher, the professor is the sage and you that you are there to listen and to learn from that person and he or she's speaking and you're taking notes and taking everything in. Um, something that I thought was interesting was that there were Erasmus students there, which is a program in Europe that students can travel um, and learn in a country other than their own. So those students weren't um, necessarily used to the education system in Italy. So they took the opportunity to interject during um, during lectures and things like that, which I think actually added to the class because, of course, we're all coming from um, different backgrounds, different ideas. Uh, so they were willing to share that information. Um, and then at the end of the semester, or sometimes just midway through the semester, the professor gave you an oral exam. So you would schedule an appointment with the professor. And he would ask you very pointed questions about the information that you learned and studied. Um, and you would sit there with him for about a half an hour. Whereas here, we're starting to change, I think, and take a communicative approach to learning and having students interact with one another. Quite different. Yes, I did have the opportunity to um, have an internship at an elementary school in Italy. Uh, and the students, when the teacher walked into the room, the students would all stand and greet him or her and then sit down. And that's how they would show a sign of respect and then begin the class. Well, what's unique about the adult language schools is it's pretty much an immersion program where you can live with a family and go to classes in the morning, all in Italian, and even if you don't know a word of Italian, everything is taught in Italian. And there's no speaking any other language in the school, unless, of course, it's an emergency. I mean, administrators are all very polyglot. They can help you if you really need it but they encourage you to try to speak Italian. So you're standing there trying really hard to express something you need. But through the process, you become a little more confident speaking. And if you live with a family and you eat with a family, then if you want to eat, you better speak a little Italian. You better know how to ask, pass that please. Mm -hmm. They'll ask you questions about how your day was and you struggle to answer. And, but it's a wonderful experience because it gets you in that zone so much quicker than just taking classes. So I've made so many friends from staying with families, and it's an amazingly inexpensive way to travel in Europe. Uh, instead, I sort of uh, hooked up with four, uh, four other students within the SUNY system and worked with an Italian real estate broker, and we rented an apartment right by Santa Croce. I was also in an apartment right by Santa Croce oh, really? between there and Palazzo <laughs> Vecchio. Oh, you were neighbors. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> and it was great because um, sometimes I'd wake up and walk outside and there was a parade coming down the street. I had no idea why necessarily, unless if it was um, some type of event that they'd advertised. But it's just so different. Um, and right below my window, there was a bakery. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, you could smell this um, coming into your window which was um, tempting, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> How wonderful. <laughs> How wonderful. Uh, I was just going to ask, now I, I know what you did for your meals because you ate with the family. How about uh, you ladies? What did you do for your meals? Um, I cooked. I wanted to, like I said, be as fully immersed in the culture as possible in Italy. Um, so I would go to the food store um, outside of my neighborhood to try to experience a little bit more of the area. and. Um, I would try to cook as many Italian meals as possible and then also to go out and try the different foods that were local to that area and when I traveled around I would have the foods that were local to those areas as well.
Um, there's something also called an aperitivo, um, so so to open your appetite uh, is what it is in Italian. So before dinner, a lot of Italians will go to have a drink and they give you free snacks that come with it and it's just a way to spend time with friends um, before your dinner time, so I did that as well. That's wonderful. Jackie, did you do a lot of cooking or...? Well, I had actually never really cooked before I went to Italy, uh, so I was really fortunate to have four great ladies that, um, as a unit, we decided we would have dinner time every night. Um, so we, most nights, cooked, and, and of course we, we did get the opportunity to go out and, and try various restaurants in the area, but we were poor students, so um, so yeah, we, we cooked a lot. and. Um, a few of my roommates were really pretty handy in the kitchen, so I started picking up some tips from there. Well, lucky you, so you That's were great. getting an education mm -hmm. at home That's right. and also <laughs> in the classroom. That's that's quite wonderful. Now, um, how about in your free time? What kind of things did you do in your free time while you were there? Uh, Louisa? Well, the uh, Italian language schools usually have the entire roster after class activities. They'll go to museums or go out to gelato or have movie nights, and on weekends they do excursions to other cities. Everything in Italian, of course. And those are all wonderful. I mean, you, you really need to take part in that. And then when there was something I really didn't want to do, there were, you know, in Florence and Rome, there's museums, in Monte Picciano, there's a million of wineries nearby. Sorrento, there's always the beach in Capri and Amalfi Coast. So, you know, there's almost, you almost don't have enough time to do those things. With, with your particular school, they had planned excursions. Absolutely. That they, they even took wonderful. those excursions. I had a wonderful time on those excursions because they bring along the teachers that are experts in art history or whatever else as your guides. And so for very little cost, you get this wonderful private tour of museums. Similarly, like you were saying, that I did have the opportunity to go through the school to attend different events. Um, but different from American schools, Italian schools don't have sports integrated into their extracurricular activities. So I did take the opportunity to search for a gym and um, I play tennis, so also to take tennis lessons, which are a lot cheaper in Italy than they are here. So I was able to really take advantage of that and I became friends with my instructor, then showed me around some little hidden secrets, secrets of Florence, um, which was great. Um, and then during school breaks, which are very similar to ours here, I had the opportunity to travel around the boot, as well as Switzerland and Spain, um, and to go to a lot of different culture, cultural events, like La Festa di Sant'Agata, which is in Catania in Sicily. Um, their saints are very important in Italy, and they still have big processions that last between one and three days, so I hoped carry Sant'Agata up to the church, up the big hill, and um, that was an amazing experience. I got to go to the Perugina factory where they make the bachi chocolate, so just different things like that. Um, the Umbria Jazz Festival um, in Umbria and Perugia they have um, that lasts for three weeks over the summer, so one of the summers I did that. Um, and then also participating in Carnevale in both Via Reggio, which is a smaller town on the water, as well as in Venice, so just the similarities and differences between the two. Yeah, I mean, mostly, it came down to hitting up as many museums as I could and traveling as much as I could. Uh, I was there for, it was in Florence for four months, so I still did not get the opportunity to go to every single museum that I wanted to because there were so many. Uh, but I did get the opportunity to travel a lot. I'd never been to Europe before, so, uh, so really just getting to as many places as possible. And any one place in particular oh, that you remember? That's, that's a really hard that's, one. It's hard it's to unfair, pick one. I know, but, it is unfair. <laughs> I mean, Florence is, is really a beautiful city, and it has a ton of tourists, which can be frustrating at times, although I was one myself. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, it also has a lot of beauty, uh, just old beauty, new beauty, and just the, the city itself is, is very thriving. Uh, so I, I, I say Florence. Florence, okay. Sure. How about you, Chris? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, I think, as for my free time, the best thing was just to have that experience as both an Italian and an American, because you're getting the best of both worlds, and um, that allowed me to live as both a resident and as a traveler, so I saw both sides of it, and 
really got deep into the culture that way. So I think similarly, traveling is one of the best things. For travel, okay. How about you, Louisa? Probably this past year, I brought my three sisters to Florence. Um, this time I rented an apartment um, because I had my sisters coming in. And my Italian relatives all came down to meet us. And that was probably the best experience because none of my sisters had ever met the relatives and I've been going back and forth for 30 years now. I had to be translator, which was really difficult because my language skills are only intermediate, but I, you know, it was challenging. But for my, to see how important that was for my sisters, to finally for them to make the connection, it was really great. So what do you think, uh, I'll throw this question, what was the most challenging aspect of studying in Italy for you? To be honest, I, again, I was, I was a student. I, there were so many things that I wanted to do, but I had a limited budget, so I really just making the dollar stretch. I, I was fortunate in that the euro to dollar rate was pretty decent at the time. I think the most challenging part was when I first arrived in Italy and then when I left. and. It's not because I didn't want to be there or didn't want to be here, but because I'm kind of torn between the two countries. I love them both. And you don't want to leave your friends or family in either country. And when you have them in both places, it's like you want a hand in an, and a leg in, on one side of the ocean and your other arm another leg on the other side. And obviously, my arms and legs aren't that long. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. How about you? Uh, for me, it was the hardest was the first week on my first trip because I had chosen to do this alone, so it's kind of a big leap of faith. I knew a little Italian, but not enough to be thrown into an immersion program, and they, my grammar skills were way better than my conversation. So of course they put me in a higher level class. I didn't understand most of what they were saying, and I had to sit there and struggle. It's amazing how much you can pick up from mm -hmm. inference, mm -hmm. but the first week I was lost, and I kept thinking, I shouldn't be in this class. But then by the set end, you're also dealing with jet lag. So half the day, you're like, where's my brain? But by the second week, you, you kind of warm in, and somehow the tongue connects to the brain. And you slowly start realizing that I've understood like, the words that she's saying, not just guessing. Mm -hmm. you know, and by the fourth week, you realize you're understanding almost everything she's saying. But that first week, you know, it was the temptation to just watch. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that must have been very tough. And I'm exhausted and... Sure, you know, the and jet lag. Not speaking to anyone in English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a theory on longevity in Italy. Okay. The wine might be nice, but it's really those 300 steps mm -hmm. from her house down to the village and back up from Monte Picciano. Why the little 70-year-old woman has lived so long and so healthy. That kind of exercise. They they don't have cars for this. They live in the village. They walk up and down these steps three and four times a day, carrying everything. I was exhausted the first day or two, and I'm walking, watching this little woman that I live with just running up the steps, running down the steps, running up the steps, and I'm just like, whoa. Right, and me paid it to go to a, a, a yeah. gym that has a right. stair climber machine. And she's running down the steps right. to get food for my dinner that night and back up, and I'm feeling like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know? Wonderful. So what advice would you offer anyone who wanted to study in Italy? Is there any advice in particular that uh, you would give that now that you're wiser for uh, going through this process, is there anything that you would like to say about that? Just do it. I'm, I'm so happy that I did it. Um, you know, of course, you want to be safe and logical, but it's an adventure and it's amazing and it will change your life. Wonderful. How about you? I totally agree. Um, I would say just do it, go for it, make sure that you're informed about what you need to know. If you can take a language class beforehand, if you don't know Italian, that's a great idea too. Um, but, you know, just like here, you need to be careful sometimes, or really all the time, just being aware of your surroundings is the same thing anywhere else. Um, but to just have that experience, it, it completely changes you and your appreciation of other cultures and um, how you see the world and what you can offer to other people. Well, for an adult going to Italy to study, um, the three pieces of advice I would have are stay as long as you can, minimum a month. 
because you need that just to absorb the language for a period of time. Second, go alone, because if you go alone, you don't have your English-speaking friends, you're more likely to really get into the Italian-speaking space. Um, and third, live with the family, because that really gives you a totally different experience. It's a wonderful, wonderful. You make friends, and you, know, you immediately have a family. Yeah. You know, in my program, there were uh, all different types of living situations, but I, I had a few friends that chose to live with Italian roommates, and by the end of our stay, those people had mastered the language way better than anyone else in the program, so I, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, it's something that I bring back to my kids, my students, um, and it's what they find most interesting in the classroom, and seeing their eyes light up when they're either fully participating in something silly, like when I make us sit in an Italian airplane and I'm the stewardess and they have to pick up magazines and ask me for things that they're missing. That's a wonderful lesson, that's, by that's the way. Right. Right. <laughs> you have that lesson I'll with tell you. you. <laughs> yes, and you have the actual Alitalia uh, stuff. Right, the stewardesses were nice enough to um, give me all of that and crowns and anything that you would need on an Italian plane. So just to see that students' eyes light up um, is huge. And then in my personal life, um, just being able to, I was able to see my cousin so much more frequently. Well, I went to Italy, I mean, I had other trips as a tourist, but I went back after I sent my kids off to college. So for me, it was kind of fulfilling something I'd always wanted to do, was to learn the language. And it was also this time spent alone, just with me after being, you know, a parent for all those years where you have no free time, your time is what the children need. So for me, it was kind of, I guess, it's not quite deep love pray, but, you know, refinding yourself, being able to spend a month with yourself doing what you want to do. And something you always wanted to do and not feeling the least bit guilty about. Yes, that's, that's quite... awesome. Being a parent is quite demanding. Yes. And uh, having a family, of course, there's always... You're living your life for other people. Um, how about you, Jack? What would you say was the most rewarding? For me, you know, up until the point that I left for Italy, I had been just aching to travel, and it really opened up the world for me. So, was this the first major trip you've made? It was, yeah, it really was. I mean, it was the first time I had crossed an ocean, um, and I had been, you know, various places before that, but not, nothing, no, no other country, basically. Um, and it was really amazing. It, it changes your perspective on things. So that that was really the most rewarding aspect to just see the world through a different lens. Wonderful. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to add about your study time in Italy that uh, might be helpful to the audience? I could have taken the exact same class in, in New York or in the United States and it would not have been even close to similar. I'd like to thank my guests for appearing on today's show and for sharing those wonderful experiences with us. It seems that studying in Italy can be a very gratifying experience and an experience that's not as expensive as one might expect. Uh, but whether you have relatives in Italy or not, you could also find that studying in Italy will open new horizons to you that you've never seen before. No matter what your interest is, from studying wine to studying medicine and all things in between, Italy has a program for you. You know, all this talk about traveling to Italy reminds me of an old song. I get you up there where the air is raining.